The Minnesota State Fair may be known for food and fun activities, but it's also a place of learning. Yeah, tonight, Renee Cooper's live from the Eco Experience Building, where she's talking butterflies with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. Hi, Renee. Hey, Kevin. Yep, this is one of the more interactive spots in the fairgrounds right now. I'm joined now by Stephen Mickelson. He's with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. And we want to call attention to the monarch butterfly here behind us that are, you were telling us, 22 feet, the wingspan here. Absolutely. And you can see we've got the rope rigged up so people can give a tug like uh, my friend Lauren is doing and make the wings flap and simulate flight of a, our state butterfly. That's right. And, and, and the monarch is a symbol of our state, but possibly one we really should not be taking for granted right now. Uh, talk to me about the resource of the monarch butterfly. What do they provide for us as humans? They are, uh, you know, the most prevalent and recognizable pollinator in Minnesota. They and so many other species of insects are essential to uh, pollinating our natural habitat. It's, they're important in food production. They're important in water quality. Uh, all those native plants can stabilize shorelines and rivers, uh, river banks, so soil erosion doesn't take place. They contribute to the economy when they help agricultural uh, food production. And uh, without them, it affects our climate in, in negative ways. Yeah, well said. And I mean, we're hearing rumblings, and you confirm this for us, that we are seeing fewer monarch butterflies this year, a smaller population. What can you tell us about why we're seeing that phenomenon? Yeah, and you know, and what I've researched, it's the numbers may vary, but it's significantly lower population, especially this year. And there can be a number of factors for that. Um, the, the change in climate is a big factor. The strange winter we had that was so warm and dry, the really wet spring, that alters the natural um, growth periods of our ecosystem and our habitats. So if their habitat isn't prepared for them when they come back from their migration, it just hurts the population. So we've been, we've been seeing a significant reduction, which is concerning, but people can plant more pollinator gardens take care of the natural uh, plants that you see. Uh, we have partners out front of our building who will teach people how to do pollinator gardens, make it simple. Once they're planted, they're very low maintenance and they're very beautiful too. And they help keep our uh, pollinator populations resilient. Well, thank you, Stephen. I mean, this is a really insightful exhibit. There are so many other interactions in here. I won't even tell you, you should check them out for yourself. For now, I'll send it back to the studio, live at the fairgrounds. Renee Cooper, Five Eyewitness News.